Next Gen Ryzen 8 U release date gets confirmed, huge new tech to make games smaller and take less memory, AMD makes a massive commitment, and Ryzen 9950X can beat the Red Ripper at this? Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that there was a recent leak that claimed that AMD's next-gen APUs were set for release on July 15th. And of course, if you didn't know that, that means you aren't following the channel, so make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld to keep up with all the latest PC hardware news. Either way, it looks like that has now been confirmed by none other than one of AMD's own partners that, if anyone would know, it would be them, and that is a Zero. Zeus. Of course, as you know, Asus is obviously going to be releasing multiple notebooks with these new chips in them, so like I said, they of all people would know, and they actually have their own storefront where, oops, they ended up leaking the details on that release, and as you can see, multiple ones here, this one, 7.15, uh, we expect product to ship by 7.15, once again, confirming that. Now, there are some that say available uh, on the delivery from week 2930, so maybe not all of these will be launching that date, but as you can see, once again, it does look like July 15th is the day. Basically, if you've been waiting to buy a new laptop, you don't have to wait much longer because these are set for release in just a couple weeks. And next up for today, if you remember this story from a little while back, NVIDIA released a very interesting new research paper called Random Access Neural Compression of Material Textures. At the time of the release, I actually went over it. Once again, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. But what this does is it basically uses compression to make texture files smaller. Now, we've obviously used compression for forever now. This isn't anything new. But the difference is that NVIDIA is using AI. And what that does is it allows for much higher resolution images to actually be smaller. You can see in their reference right here, this is NVIDIA's NTC compression, and it has an image of 4096 by 4096 at just 3.8 megabytes, while the current tech that's used would have 1024 by 1024 at 5.3 megabytes. So obviously this is a really big deal, especially when we compare it to the reference 4096 by 4096 at 256 megabytes. And you can see that both images are very similar, though compared to the other one, Nvidia's version looks significantly better. And what this does is in combination with the fact that it can also decompress in real time, it should lower file sizes as well well as lower memory usage in games. And obviously that's a really big deal for everyone. Well, AMD has now announced something similar, but it actually sounds even better. As you can see right here, it says, we'll present, quote, neural texture block compression at EGSR 2024 in London. It says, nobody likes downloading huge game packages. Our method compresses the texture using a neural network, reducing data size. Now, that obviously sounds very similar to NVIDIA's own research paper, except it says that they've unchanged the runtime execution, and that allows for easy game integration. So far, this research paper from NVIDIA has remained just that. At least as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any of this integrated into a game. Well, at least according to what this sounds like, though I will say that we don't really know exactly what kind of things are changed with NVIDIA's, but from this, it sounds like it's going to be a lot easier for developers to implement AMD's version in their game, which if that is true, we could actually start seeing this and seeing it very soon. And obviously that would help, like I said, pretty much everyone, especially those who don't have really high-end GPUs with a ton of GPU memory. And next up, I have a very interesting news story that originally comes from the Next platform. In it, they actually got a chance to sit down and discuss things with AMD's own general manager of their data center business. Now, obviously I primarily discuss gaming on this channel, but this has some really big implications for not just data center, but also their consumer products. Well, in this article, they actually ask about Intel's own Sierra Forest Xeon 6 CPUs, and basically what they ask is, 
they are wondering because at least according to them it seems like intel won't be able to catch amd on cpus until they can actually get close to parity on the process and packaging with tsmc and he just wants to know if that really is the case to which mr nora responds and he responds with something really interesting you can see first he says i don't want to handicap intel's capabilities on process pat gelsinger has got a very aggressive plan and we always assume that they're going to do what they say but he really likes their chances with TSMC and he says, I think they are an amazing partner and an amazing execution machine. And right here he says, and we're going to keep using their most advanced process for each generation. Basically, he's making a really big kind of promise here, stating that as long as TSMC keeps making their processes better and better, AMD is going to use those new processes. Meaning that at least for the foreseeable future, AMD's processors are going to keep getting better and better. Of course, that's not a huge surprise, but what this means is that Intel is going to have a really hard time ever completely catching up to AMD. And lastly for today, while talking Intel having a tough time to catch up with AMD, we have a new benchmark on AMD's upcoming Ryzen 9 9950X, and let's just say it does not look good for Intel. As you can see right down here, this actually comes originally from a Anatech forum user who cites another user as the owner of the CPU and credited himself as simply sharing the info. So obviously you do want to take this with a bit of grain of salt, but let's just say if it's true, Intel should be seriously concerned. With that, let's get right to the performance. As you can see right here, the benchmarks are once again A to 64, but we have AES encryption, FP32 floating point, as well as FP64. And as you can see, the Ryzen 9950X completely crushed their last gen processor. We're talking even the 16 core 7950X by 45% in AES encryption, 39% in FP32, and 39% in FP64. But when we look at, yes, this isn't their current gen 14,900K, but of course it's likely not gonna be that much of a difference, and at least here, it actually beats it at AES encryption by 55% FP32 and FP34 by 60%. But it actually gets even more wild because when we compare it to the 32 core Threadripper 7975WX, once again, 32 cores, so double the cores versus the 9950X, it actually still beats it at AES encryption. It's actually 11% faster, but now with that said, it does lose to FP32 floating point as well as FP64 floating point, with the FP32 being 13% slower and 16% slower on FP64. But while it is slower, uh, then, 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 I, then, than FP64, but while it is slower in both of these, it's not much slower, especially given the fact that once again, it has half the number of cores. Now, with that said, these are very specific workloads and pretty much no app just does one specific thing. It also depends on how well it utilizes the cores, all of that stuff. So I'm not saying that you need to sell your Threadripper or if you were thinking about buying it, instead you should get the 9950X or anything like that. This is only gonna beat it in very specific scenarios, but this is still seriously impressive. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 CPUs, or are you more excited about their new compression tech? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.